Hello everyone. Um, welcome to this CubeEdge session. So in this session, we'll focus uh, more about how and why uh, CubeEdge has, has designed the architecture so that they have separated the orchestration um, capabilities from the com from the computation functionality uh, in the architecture. So, um, how many of you have uh, have ever worked or have uh, have ever uh, heard about CubeEdge? Okay, so many of you. So I don't need to explain um, in detail how and why uh, how CubeEdge is good enough and how it is providing a complete solution for um, the edge computing. So I will fo focus more about the separation and the architecture design than the definition part of it. So yeah, let's get started. I am Harshita. Um, it's been th three years now. I've I have, uh, I'm working in cloud native environment and uh, have been active in the open source community. Gave a few talks uh, on various open source projects like um, KKP, uh, which is a multi-cluster management system, and open EBS for stateful application um, management. So um, currently, I'm working as a software developer in Kubernetes. Um, so that's it about me. Let's move forward. Today, uh, initially, we'll start with a bit, bit of a description of what is CubeEdge. And then we'll move to um, the architecture part of it. And uh, I'll describe separately how the cloud and the edge components are working in CubeEdge. And then finally, we'll uh, discuss a bit about how the communication between the two components is working. OK. so. Um, CubeEdge is a Kubernetes native uh, edge computing framework. What does that mean exactly is uh, developer ca developers can write their containerized application once and deploy it anywhere like we do for Kubernetes. But uh, also keeping in mind that um, the resource constraints of the edge uh, and the network uh, capabilities and the um, privacy uh, requirements for, for the edge computing. So it's. Um, uh, it's not uh, about um, separating the both of them. It's also about making a synergy between the cloud and edge so that we can um, utilize the Kubernetes, um, um, this, uh, Kubernetes uh, capabilities and leverage the experience and uh, um, the loosely coupled architecture and the extensibility of Kubernetes, but also combine it with um, the edge computing part. So it's about uh, extending the edge uh, from the uh, extending edge uh, from the cloud so that we can utilize the cloud capabilities. Plus, we can also uh, make the design such, such as uh, edge can work auton autonomously. So in case the network is not working, so uh, for, for that time, uh, edge can work. Um, without the network connection, but as soon as the net, uh, connection is maintained again, the metadata is synced again and it can start working again with the communication with the cloud. So um, CubeEdge is one of the first uh, open source software uh, which has uh, both the cloud and edge components open sourced. So anybody can use it. Um, um, so it's it's free and open for the community to explore um, both, the cloud, both the edge and cloud components. It, it's also designed such that uh, millions of devices can be maintained in the edge side. And uh, if, if you have an application which, is, um, which requires much of a resource and heavy uh, processing, it, you can run that on the cloud side. So. Um, uh, as you can see, uh, nowadays, CubeEdge is spreading much and more and more, and there have been a wide range of applications for that, may it be satellites or uh, traffic uh, sensors or uh, CDN platforms, et cetera. So, OK, so uh, let me give you a brief uh, um, review of what were the initial challenges uh, in using Kubernetes and extending it to uh, the edge. So first is 
resource constraints, obviously, because the edge devices can be a, a small box. Uh, so it obviously has some restrictions. And as we know that Kubernetes at least requires one GB of memory sometimes, and gateway, gateway also requires much memory. So that was first challenge. How can we uh, limit the resource requirements on the edge side, but uh, utilize Kubernetes capabilities, capabilities um, on the cloud side? And poor network connection, because the edge nodes sometimes can only work on a private network. So how to maintain the connectivity uh, between the cloud and the edge? And uh, the third was um, node, edge nodes should be able to work independently if there is a network uh, outrage or um, network connection breaks for uh, some time so that um, the processing is still happening on the edge side. So this, that was the third challenge. And uh, yeah, so the fourth one was before um, um, QBest, there was not, uh, especially if we talk about Kubernetes, it's not designed specifically for IoT devices, et cetera. So that was something which needs to be kept in mind while uh, uh, making the architecture of the QBest uh, project. So let's see, let's see how QBest solves or tries to solve these problems and challenges. All right. So um, as I said, uh, the project itself does not see uh, uh, Edge as separate, but also it's a, a kind of an extension to the cloud so that we can utilize the cloud capabilities, but uh, keep um, um, Edge as uh, keeping the Edge nodes uh, working independently too. And so to make them work synonymously and uh, in synergy, uh, it's required, and it's, I think it's necessary to have a bi-directional connection, not just a one-directional com uh, communication from the edge to the cloud, so that uh, all the updates and uh, made uh, application update or a device update can, can be synchronized from the edge to the cloud or the cloud to the edge. And yeah, the third part was keeping uh, edge lightweight. So what they did is they re reorganized the kubelet uh, of Kubernetes uh, to make it, it a bit um, smaller, a bit lightweight. So now it's around 70 MBs. It requires 70 MBs of memory. Also for the applications which are using Docker, they have also supported uh, a lot of other CRIs so that um, you can create a lightweight container application uh, which will be uh, easily maintained or run in the cube, in, on the edge side. And, uh, yeah, it also has designed the architecture so that the device management is easy. And because we are using Kubernetes APIs, the devices are created as CRDs. And you can view them similar to any other CRD which we, which we do in the Kubernetes environment. Also, uh, there's not a, so if you are um, checking your nodes using the Kube, Kubernetes, you can see both the cloud nodes and edge nodes. The, the, so, kind of both the nodes will be will look similar to you and you can see all the devices you can manage the devices you can update the devices using the using how you used to do in the kubernetes environment also the autonomy part so what they have specifically done to um, achieve this is they they are maintaining a separate database on the edge side so that any update and the meta update is cached in the database in case an outrage happens as not can can get the metadata from the database, and it can work uh, autonomously. So um, as I said, uh, they see Edge as an extension of cloud, and uh, bi-directional communication is maintained. I'll explain a bit more about how they are achieving it. It's loosely coupled, so the uh, Edge side can work autonomously. And the fourth side is the node autonomy using the database maintained and on the edge side. So let's go to the architecture part. I'll explain a bit how and what are the components exactly. So on the upper side, you can see there's a clear separation between cloud and edge. And on the cloud side, the green box shows the KTS API server. It is kind of a similar to Kubernetes. There is no change made to that. And uh, so. The cloud core, uh, which is uh, created by uh, the cube edge, it is one of the component of the cube edge, has controllers. Uh, 
so controllers uh, have two main components first uh, have two main types mainly which is device and uh, edge controller so device is more of a foc have more of focus on uh, managing the devices and pushing the uh, updates and so for example add delete create events to the edge side and the edge controller is more of on um, pushing or syncing um, add create delete events uh, of any application of config map or secrets and it also uh, makes sure that a particular pod is scheduled on a desired edge node using a node selector and then uh, the communication parts of it comes so you if you the, the yellow box and just above the separation the uh, the cloud hub is used to um, is used to um, um, to let, uh, make a communication uh, between the cloud and the edge so that the events and uh, the metadata can be communicated easily to the edge. So it's, it means maintains a web socket connection uh, to the edge. And when we come to edge part, so the, the big box you see is edge core. It has multiple modules and components. Um, when you see edge hub, it's a WebSocket client. The Cloud Hub was the uh, WebSocket uh, server. And it is, uh, it's used uh, to maintain the connectivity and uh, to push um, update or watch events to the Cloud side. Then you see a Meta Manager. Uh, meta Manager is basically a message, message processor, which you know, all the messages which are coming through the WebSocket are uh, processed by Meta Manager. And as I said before, to maintain and to achieve the autonomy, they have uh, created a local data store on the edge side, which is that green box you see here, called node <coughs> level data store. And the HD, which you see here, is kind of a lightweight uh, kubelet. As I mentioned that they have reorganized uh, kubelet to make it a little bit lightweight, so it takes, takes care of nodes, edge nodes, and pods, and uh, secrets, whatever the KTS resources are created. And down there, you can see a lot of uh, container runtime supported as Docker, container D, CROI. And uh, on the right side down, you can see Mosquito uh, Broker, which is used basically to have the connectivity with the with the devices connected, maybe it's uh, a speaker, Raspberry Pi, or any sensor. Um, so let's move forward. I'll uh, explain more about each component of uh, cloud, cloud core and edge core. So cloud hub, cloud hub, as I said, is a WebSocket server. And it's, it watches the cloud side and uh, like caches and sends the metadata on the edge hub side uh, which is a part of edge core edge is a lightweight kubelet kind of it's an agent uh, which takes care of the containerized applications and the nodes edge hub is a web socket client on the edge core side meta manager is a message processor and it's also responsible for retrieving and saving the metadata on the edge side so that the uh, Nodes, edge nodes can work autonomously. Edge controller is something uh, which takes care of um, um, push, uh, syncing the events and making sure that the pods and the resources created on the cloud side are synced uh, to the edge side and they are created on uh, the edged part of it, which is kind of a kubelet on edge side. Event bus is used for the communication with the devices. Um, so Mosquito uh, is used, which is which uh, the design is more of about a pub sub model, which is publish and subscribe. So the broker has some topics, and the device and the client um, subscribes or publishes uh, to that topic. So for example, a device has published uh, some message to the broker, and whatever uh, client, whoever client has subscribed to that uh, topic will get uh, that message. So it's kind of uh, designed for specifically uh, 
taking uh, care in the environment which has less uh, uh, resource consumption and which has to decrease the latency and to m maintain uh, or to work in a um, in a small environment so device join is something which takes care of syncing the device status and data so um, to summarize this and on the cloud side we have some controllers um, and cloud hub which takes care of communication on the edge side we have edge hub which takes care of the communication we have meta manager which takes care of syncing and taking the data uh, from the database we have a database which uh, saves the metadata for the cloud for the edge nodes we have a um, mosquito broker device to an event bus to take to take care of um, devices um, devices management and taking and um, sending and receiving message messages so on the edge side uh, applications and devices both are managed and uh, device to an event bus focus on devices and edged uh, with, with that focus on care test based resources like config maps applications etc okay so um, i'll explain a bit more about how the autonomy is achieved as i mentioned the data on the application side is distributed from the cloud to the edge um, and it's stored in a database on the edge side um, through the meta manager and you can see uh, the database through this uh through this link and the database which is used uh, right now is quelite okay uh edged edged will be able to relate more because as we have been working on kubernetes we know how kubelet works so it's kind of a lightweight kubelet um and it takes care of pods and uh, resources created it also helps on deploying the containerized workloads and uh, um a lot um, multiple cris are supported in order to make sure that the resource consumption consumption of the application is less um yeah so yes i the i have listed separately uh, the csi supported and the cri supported so that um you know what is uh, currently being handled on the edge side so for cri we have docker container d cri and for csi we have mostly all the volume types which are supported in kubernetes edge controller so as i talked about uh, edge con uh, controller before but it's something which watches the ktes uh, api server on the cloud and uh, it pushes or gets events uh, for the ktes resources so for example you have created a pod on the cloud side so the create event will be sent to the edge side so that a containerized application can be created and suppose uh, you are you need to watch a resource for it to get reconciled you can send, uh, sync the watch and update status from the edge side to the cloud side so two separate controllers are created for that so for the down direction what i mean by that is add update delete operations from the cloud to the edge downstream controller is created and for the um, up upside direction which means the edge uh, so which means the edge devices and the applications update and watch events uh, upstream controller is created to sync it to the cloud side okay so um, for the communic uh, let's jump to the communication part of it how the how both the components Com tries to communicate this is a, a part of a config which i have copied from um, the set uh, which is used to set up the cube uh, edge site so this is a part of cloud core yaml as i mentioned that cloud hub is a part of cloud core and so we can uh, we used a web socket for the communication um we can also use quick um so both are supported and both uh, uh can work um to maintain a tunnel or a channel to the edge so that the the messages are easily communicated to the edge side and uh, let's jump to edge hub uh, this is um the part of the edge side to maintain the communication with the cloud so 
this is a part of configuration which we need to do to set up it. So let's, uh, I'll give you a little bit of uh, description on how to quick start and easily set up Cubedge. So um, there's a uh, installer of uh, Cubedge which you can use, but it has some limitations. For example, it can only uh, run on a few OS right now. For example, Ubuntu, it cannot be run on a Raspberry Pi. But it's pretty easy because it does all the work for you mainly. It checks if the prerequisites are there already. And if it's not, it installs them. And uh, it, creates, uh, it creates the cloud core service. And for the edge, it creates, a, creates edge core service. And uh, it starts the modules for the cloud and the edge. So uh, Cube uh, EDM uh, init part, it's, it's used to start of the cloud components. And the join command is used to start of the edge components. And the reset part, if you are done with your resources and you want to clean it up, you can use the reset command for it. So um, mainly in the edge side, you sh for the quick start and the basic setup, you need Mosquito. For the device communication, you need Docker. And for uh, the cloud side, you need to have a Kubernetes cluster. and. Uh, so what, uh, the, what the initial step or the basic steps would be, you create certificates on your cloud side. So, and those certificates need to be moved or copied uh, to the edge site for the communication. And then you can run the cloud core as a binary on your cloud side. Um, you provide uh, the location or the master address of uh, your Kubernetes cluster in the cloud core using a kube config, or you can provide a master um, creator server address. On the edge side, you need to provide uh, the cloud core API and port, which you have already set up in the first step. And the Mosquito should be running uh, there on the edge side to maintain the communication with the devices. Third part is you can manually or automatically add um, the edge nodes on the cloud. Um, for uh, creating it manually, you can uh, deploy a JSON on the Kubernetes cluster. For uh, automatic uh, setup, you can just add um, um, a configuration in the Edge Core YAML, which will automatically add the Edge nodes uh, for your QBS setup. So this is the first command which I mentioned about, which is kubeadm init. As you can see, I have provided separately uh, a value for kube config. By default, it takes a value from the root directory. But uh, I wanted to provide a separate uh, kube config for my uh, s cloud setup. So as you can see, it uh, uh, downloads uh, and manages cloud core uh, components and CSI drivers, et cetera. And uh, this is the logs for the, uh, these are the logs for the cloud core service started. As you can see, there's down downstream controller started, upstream controllers, device controllers. All these are part of um, um, managing and uh, syncing the um, events from the cloud to the edge side. And a WebSocket is created uh, to maintain the communication with the edge. So the service was running um, properly. So let's jump to edge core side. As you can see, um, kube adm join command is used to start of the edge uh, service plus also add a service, uh, add a node to the cloud. So I have provided a token which can be taken using kube adm get token command, or, you, or there is a secret created in kube edge namespace on the cluster which you, which, whose kube config you already provided. So bo through both of these ways, either of the ways you can get the token uh, to, in order to join your um, edge node to the cloud. You can provide the name of the node. I have provided edge hyphen node for that. And you need to provide the cloud core IP port, obviously, for the communication, uh, which I've already set up in the first step. And then the next part would be registering the node. Uh, manually registering uh, looks, like, looks something like that. You create a, create a JSON and then apply it on your Kubernetes cluster. Um, so, a little bit about device management. As I said, the devices are created as CRDs on the cluster. 
and it has two parts. One is device model, and second is the, insta second is the instance. Model generally describes how a device should look like, but the, uh, and the device CRD is more of an actual device. You can describe what the device looks like. And uh, device controller on the cloud side takes part uh, and manages the device devices, which are created as CRDs using the kubectl command. So this was a brief uh, introduction of how the cloud and edge components work separately and how they are trying to uh, make the synergy between cloud and edge and how the communication is working. I know this is quite a lot for uh, a short session, but in future I'll, I'll try to set up a few demos and so that uh, you can understand easily how you can actually make it to work and actually create a device and see how it's working on that side. So that's it for today. Thank you. Any questions?